where they went into human psyche and and uh, okay. combined blues music with rock and so yes. many other genres yes. and created yes. some beautiful music and I l and their lyrics are very meaningful so so that that's why I, that's why I love them they, mm -hmm. they they are very out of the way band you know you have to cultivate a taste for Floyd you won't like them yeah, 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 immediately exactly, exactly. Uh, so I particularly like them that's why Dr. Vimari do you <laughs> any different taste of music <coughs> or do you actually like Pink Floyd as no, well? I love Pink Floyd oh yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> Actually, Lal has a history of being a musician. He played in a band before. When right. I met him, he was playing in a band. Okay. He played lead guitar. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things he doesn't want to talk about. Okay. So that's what I'm there for. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, talking about um, the fact that uh, you know there are interesting things about <laughs> Lal's uh, life. I, I I just want to ask you, how did you meet? Tell us how you met. Uh, you said you were friends for a long time. Yeah, yeah, way back uh, as school neighbors. Um, I worked at the island as a trainee journalist and he was there too. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we were friends for a long time and okay. uh, and got were married you writing much, much back later. Then? Hmm? Were you writing back then? Just new stories, yeah? No, you had Used poems. to cover, did you I write poems, poetry? You had no poetry. way. Yeah, yeah, you had poetry. I can't days. remember. No, no, you did. So you fell in love with each other and each other's literature also? Not at that point, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were friends for the longest time, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, we got married much, much, much later. All right, that's great. Um, everybody, um, everybody knows that you both write and you both teach. Tell us how you relate teaching to writing. How, you, how, how do you manage the combination of that? You mean time-wise or? Everything, yeah. time-wise, the, right. the priorities, whatever. Um, when I teach literature, I um, have changed my perspective now because I also, while teaching, I'm seeing it from the side of the writer as well. Okay. Whereas those days it was just as a teacher and a critic. So now I kind of find myself having more empathy for the writer and think, telling my students, look, you can't jump to conclusions about that. Maybe the writer meant this. And then they go, ah, oh, miss, that's because you're a writer. So that kind of ah. dynamic changes. Yeah. But in other subjects, I don't see any real link. I, I have compartmentalized those two parts of my life. Um, okay. writing, teaching is what I do. It's my career. It's, yeah. it's my life. Writing is very much of something I do to just, it's something that, oh, what can I say? Um, I haven't done it for the longest time. It, it just uh, happens when it feels like happening. Of course. Most of what I write I never show anybody so it's just a cathartic thing I do. Um, yeah, so. So how do you... Do yeah, you I think, uh, yeah, I think I would agree with, uh, with Vivi Marie about, uh, yeah, when you teach uh, you now suddenly on the other side, you're mm -hmm. jumping over to a separate side, yeah. you're looking at your, at novels or short stories from very critical, exactly. structural yeah. or I don't know, moral or whatever kind of perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, you understand both sides. That so, right, being a writer and a teacher—that's the, the first advantage. For me, uh, teaching and writing are both passionate activities. I l sort of don't feel myself when I go into a classroom and at sharp point I start my classes on time. I mean, I just look at my audience and I start. I just don't feel myself, it's <laughs> and I really enjoy that. So, it's writing. When I mm. sit down, write. I I don't feel myself. I uh, sort of my identity blends into something some kind of that's space crazy, and yeah. I, d I don't feel anything that's that's what I love about it that, that's why I enjoy it so much that's what you should do basically that something that you're passionate about something that you feel like losing yourself yeah something like that yeah. I think somebody some violinist also, was it uh, was it uh, Israel violinist who said that you know when he performs he doesn't feel himself he just of course I remember that that quote particularly when you when you ask the question yes Th that's Pearl, the whole point. It's Stark Pearl, and I think that's the violin. Okay. Maybe my pronunciation is wrong, but... Uh. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But that's the whole purpose of, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see that you are involved in something that you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. Because some people do it for different reasons, you know, they get into jobs for different reasons. And it's, it's, it's wonderful to know that collaboratively you have finally found out something that you both are actually passionate about. And the fact that teaching and writing can go also a long way. And it also satisfies you. Yeah, it so complements each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are going to a very, very short break right now. And uh, we'll be back with Dr. Vimari and La Don't Go.
Good morning, Sri Lanka. I hope you had a little uh, very interesting break out there because we have so many more questions to ask from Dr. Bhimari Vanapurun and Lal Madhavata Gedara who are here right now with me and I'm very honored to have them here. Um, starting off with Dr. Bhimari, um, are you idolized in the Sri Lankan literary scene? I certainly I hope so. not. <laughs> do you feel like you've been, uh, you know, do people come right to you and saying I'm a big fan of yours? Yeah, I get that a bit. Okay. Um, I get out. As photographs and stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel? How do you feel about it? Um, it's nice to be appreciated. Um, it's nice when people come and tell you that they can relate to your work, right. or that uh, you come across as being an empathetic person. Because I like to think of myself as being empathetic. Uh, yeah, it, sometimes it can be a bit embarrassing, <laughs> um, but it's nice. Yeah. Tell us about um, the most profound compliment that you've got about your writing. Uh, Do you okay. remember any? I've got many. Mm -hmm. um, been compared to other writers uh, whom I admire and stuff. But yeah, I think once I was at an event which spoke about literature and the role of literature in trauma. Okay. And uh, there was this medical student in the audience who I didn't know. I didn't know her at all. Okay. And after the readings, and I came down from the stage, she told me, "You're very real." Wow. I I thought that was really sweet, and it kind of stuck. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, what do you, what what can you say about that? Do you also get feedback like that? Tell us about um, the most um, touching compliment that you've got. From someone. All oh, right. Okay. I mean, I mean. Uh, Do people come running to you in public? And no, no, not. Oh, me. we love your work. <laughs> I'm sure really, your students say yes, that. Yes, my students do. Of course, my students yes. do, and and uh, there are a couple of people who are like hardcore fans here and there, whom I don't know. Suddenly, I meet them, and they say, you know, I read your book and whatever. I think the 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 when I was reading at the Gaul Literary Festival, my first collection of short stories, which was shortlisted for the Gresham Prize in 2002. Mm. Uh, it, it was the very first uh, GLF that was held in Sri Lanka, and and I, I had never gone to a literary festival, and okay. uh, <laughs> I was on uh, stage with these five Sri Lankan writers. Okay. And as so when it, when it came, they gave me a chance to talk, explain my writing. Uh, I preferred not to talk a lot about my writing. I said, I let me read from my book. Okay. Uh, and it was an audience of mostly uh, what you call uh, non-natives, foreign, you know, yes. foreigners, yes. and and and. Sri Lankans, and uh, when I read from this story, I remember it's called the Window Cleaner Soul. When I read yes. from that, they all clapped. I that was like <laughs> that was like uh, overwhelming. very overwhelming because I didn't I didn't expect them to clap. Mm. Uh, and I think the second issue, uh, second compliment, the best compliment I receive is uh, the Gracian, uh, the, the the judges' speech, uh, an excerpt which of you course. just yeah, read. Yeah, I yeah. think they they beautifully captured uh, what I was trying to do in a, in a different kind of discourse. Mm. So that's those are the <laughs> things I remember. Of course. It's a, it's a very humbling process, isn't it, when somebody comes and appreciates It's nice to be appreciated, like yeah. Vivi said. It's nice to be appreciated and yeah. if people can, I mean, at the end of the day, you write for an outside audience. You don't mm. write for yourself. Yeah. So it's nice to be appreciated and if people can understand what you're doing and have, can empathize with it, it's, it's a beautiful feeling. Of course. And especially if somebody says it's very real. Mm. Yeah, I no think that's a very powerful Yeah, more than statement. saying, okay, I like your metaphors and I guess mm. really, but saying that your writing is very real. It, I can Correct. relate to it. That's I think what every artist should. Uh, maybe that's what every artist aims for, you know. So every writer must be aiming for the same thing, and I'm sure that you must be thrilled to have that kind of response yeah, exactly. from people. Yeah, It's a public property at the end of the day once you publish the exactly. book, and if they like it and if they enjoy it, if it means something to their life, if they can reflect on it, learn something from it, and that's the. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the fact that you mentioned they should learn something from it. Um, tell us whether you actually teach out of your poetry. <laughs> out of your writing in university? No, I wouldn't teach really my own that? writing. Okay. I wouldn't teach my own writing. But do you do you uh, parallelly, you know, uh, relate to your writing or something like that? I did uh, teach some of her poetry at okay. a separate okay. uh, location, but of course, uh, you know, no, I didn't. Uh, those students didn't know that, you know, I mm. I knew the poet. Mm. I just got their own feed, got them to comment on the text. I mean, I I didn't add anything of. Uh, any other knowledge other than that. Of course, yeah. uh, But I wouldn't teach my own. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not what I meant. Um, Dr. Vimari, I would like to ask you a question. Um, do you recollect writing about the relationship that you had with, sir? 
There's one poem in my first collection. I yes. think it's called Going Driving Home, I can't remember. Okay, do you remember? I just that was a poem I wrote for him. Okay. Yeah. Any excerpts from it? <laughs> I can't I remember saying something like you used to have a ponytail and um, <laughs> whatever and I remember writing about it because I was I had had a drink too many and couldn't drive <laughs> and he drove <laughs> I guess he doesn't drink okay. I was really grateful <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah talking about that I was just wondering um, Dr. Vimari you're, you've uh, you've been reading for your PhDs for a while and um, so you you're doing your masters right yeah, now right, Mr. so you know studying teaching and writing how do you how do you do that together is, is it like a personal process or do you actually share each other's um, journey in that um, actually I wrote published both books during the time I was studying for my PhD exactly yeah and I wasn't teaching at that point because oh, right, we get okay. a study leave okay yeah uh, it was I think writing in the end is a very lonely process mm. you you don't really involve the other person. <laughs> you don't keep saying, ah, can you read this and give me feedback. Yeah. It's just at the very end, I remember giving him my manuscript and saying, what do you think? And similarly, actually he didn't even do that with his book. Okay. I read it after it won. All right. That's the time that I, or when it was shortlisted, I said, can I do a manuscript? And he was like, only now you want to read it because it was shortlisted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah so that is not really, uh, that's that's two very person, separate right. journeys. Okay. okay. And, um, sir? Yeah, I think for me, uh, your initial question about uh, teaching, uh, studying, and, and writing. writing. Yes. For me, all three complement each other. It's of like course. a triangle. Uh, when I teach, go and teach a literary text, some, sometimes, uh, mm, uh, you know, every year I look at the same literary text in diverse ways. So, some, what I teach in another class might not be the same when I t tackle the same class one year later. Because I see different new, new things in the text that I have never seen before. Mm. So all that sometimes helps me when I write, okay, right. I could also look at it this way and yeah. what I write also goes into the class and when I study uh, my uh, horizons expand and they, they, they always help the classroom and the text. So, so for me, it's all three are connected. Of course. What is your teaching process like, ma'am, answer? Uh, Please tell us. Teaching process. How do you teach? As in, some people just follow something. They prepare and then mm. they follow the same thing. How do you teach literature? How do you teach um, English in what is your process like is that also very personal or do you follow some kind of system well there is the syllabus of course the curriculum yeah. but I always again I every year I t I never use the same notes or the same material mm -hmm. or whatever exactly yeah it's different I would always organize it in response to the dynamic of the classroom and I I'm personally a very interactive teacher I go for discussion and facilitation mm. rather than me being like this lecture uh, yeah <laughs> and pouring wisdom into no that's yeah. not how it so yeah I have a lesson plan I mean I okay. my training is also very much in education and social linguistics so my PhD wasn't in literature mm. so that tends to be a bit different from teaching literature okay. it's not the same 